Rest in peace, World Dame, by the way. I was not trying to make fun of him, I was just trying to sing and play guitar at the same time. Which I'm not really good at. What's up everyone and welcome to FEQ 128 Oh, Ola you sneaky bastard What the fuck is that are you holding in your hands man? Well look at this That is green So yeah you might have seen this is the new S1.7 Lime Burst Solar Guitar It's available from solarguitars.com Plugged, plugging myself Check, done. What's up everyone? Welcome to a new Sunday. How's it going? I'm doing really really well, except that my eyes are a little fucked up. Maybe you can see that, maybe you cannot. People are probably gonna say, hola, you opiate addict. Fuck you. Well, I, I just have a little cold. It's just what it is, so... Chill. Let's just get on with the questions. I'm really happy that you guys are here, by the way. Are you watching this as a premiere? Then I'm here chatting with you, just saying. Uh, what's up? Hi Sai, question for your next FAQ When you do parts like on Jared Dying Smell compilation How long do you spend writing and recording the part? Would love to... No? So I think you're talking about like the Jared uh, Dines Either like a shred collab When I get to do something like that Usually I start off by listening to the part itself Like the backing track part And then I try to noodle around You know and uh, you know Find the key and noodle around that key and uh, usually I press record right away and I just sit and noodle and noodle and noodle and as I come up with something I stop, I kind of try and work around that part and eventually I work myself up to a full solo and usually I record a full solo and then as I have my full solo done I sit and practice that solo maybe for like half a day or something like that and then when I practice for a long time to be able to nail the solo because that's not always the case uh, I practice and practice until I can nail it and then I record video and record the solo at the same time so what you're seeing in the video is actually being played live so it's not actually being mimicked or anything like that I really do take pride in uh, that uh, you know my videos are supposed to be as live as can be basically so there you go the process is start writing the solo then when the solo has been written I practice I practice, I practice, I practice until I can actually play the solo and then I record video and audio at the same time and that's it and uh, for like the shred collab I think that would probably be like eight hours of work or something like that a full day of work and you know writing solos is it's really hard for me it's tough for me it's uh, it, it's really a painstaking process so uh, I need to take my time thank you great question Mark Weber uh, Mark Weber like Weber tools Hola, I love your playing and videos. What are your thoughts on Alex Skolnick, his solo work and with Testament? All right, Alex Skolnick, awesome guitar player. Too familiar about his solo work. Isn't that kind of like fusion jazz uh, type of deal happening? I don't remember. I think that was what he was doing when he was not in Testament because he played on the earlier albums, then he quit Testament and then he came back when was it like end of the 2000 decade or something like that and he has been playing with Testament since I mean Alex Skolnick has a really cool style of playing and uh, he has some really memorable solos Over the Wall for instance that solo from uh, the album Legacy there's just so many classic solos on those earlier albums so if you haven't checked them out it's oh there's a ton and ton of inspiration to be found there and also he was really cool because he also had the 540p2 Ibanez Mwah. Love those shapes man They were really something different I had two of those guitars back in the day uh, That I actually refinished and made them look really nice And uh, he played those and That was like the Skolnick guitar I would say So there you go Swan Hey Ola, question for the next FAQ Will there ever be any merch in the future? I would love to buy a sweater with your logo on it Great question because then I can plug myself again. You know, I have a uh, you know, I have a merch store. In some countries, you can even see my merch store down underneath this video here from Teespring, but I'll post a link to the Teespring store and also the Spreadshirt store so you can go pick up a bunch of new merch. I have one piece of new merch coming. It's already out this week, but while I'm recording this, it's not really done, I guess, but it will be done in time for this FAQ and you should get it. It's uh, right over here. I'm gonna ball sack. 
Borath, it disappoints me that you never heard of Between the Bird I mean, Colors is one of the best metal records ever made, in my opinion Oh, uh, he's talking about uh, in the latest FAQ I said that I actually never uh, properly listened to Between the Bird I mean, I've heard about them, okay? So you're a little bit wrong there, just saying Obviously it sucks that you're disappointed But look how much I'm caring right now about you being disappointed With that said though, I have started listening to Between the Bird and Me and yes they are kicking ass uh, I can't actually wait to listen more to them when I get some time over which uh, I don't Tyler Brubacher Hey Ola, what do you think about Malevolent Creation? My personal favorite album is Retribution Mmm, you're pulling one of my heartstrings right there Malevolent Creation is one of those death metal bands that I really got into during the 90s uh, together with Bolt Thrower I think basically for me it was Bolt Thrower and Malevolent Creation The album Eternal and Retribution as you say is like I mean, riffs for days Malevolent Creation is basically the riff death metal band out there They have so many really cool riffs and you know, the drum work on those albums are like Urgh. And also obviously uh, Brett Hoffman, the vocalist, rest in peace But currently the new singer for Malevolent Creation is Lee and he's actually a solar guitars artist Oh holy shit That's actually making me really proud He's flying the solar guitars flag out there when they're playing uh, you know, doing Malevolent Creation tours So that's, that, that makes me really really happy on the inside and very smooth in my anus Don is Lockett Lamau, need tabs for demonetized music please Okay, demonetized music, I know what he's talking about It's this Okay, riff of the day Riff of the day This is basically the music I use whenever I get a demonetized section on one of my videos or FAQs where I, you know, check out a banner or something like that I use that music It's beautiful, I love it Alright, should I make a proper riff of the day? I guess I should because otherwise people will get mad and pissed off and you know how it is Okay, because I'm on a 7th string Let's do Nevermore Inside four walls My friend they took away your freedom But they will never take your mind Something like that, okay slow It's really cool So you need a 7th string obviously and then it's like this <laughs> Yes! Inside for Walls from Dead Heart and Dead World Incredible album Alex Perevodchik <laughs> Perevodchik Hey Ola, what is the most memorable question you've ever received in your FAQs? That's a great question I think the most memorable one that I have on the top of my lungs right here is if I pee in the shower or not Which raised a bunch of questions because when I first got the question I was like Who the fuck pees in the shower? And then everyone's like, oh you know Think about it, right? The water goes down the drain Why not just pee when you're showering? And you know, save a flush or two from the toilet I'm like Hmm... That actually makes a lot of sense So now I actually do Sometimes pee in the shower Okay, I can see it in front of me Blabbermouth Ola Pees in the shower it's gonna make a great headline, but there you go, I do actually pee in the shower a couple of times, not every time man, I don't always need to go when I'm taking a shower, just saying I'm still a frequent user of the toilet Hayden Naughton, hey Ola, what's more challenging for you, playing clean or playing distorted? Keep up the great work P.S. How's the year of positive Ola going? Oh, thank you so much! As of right now, I'm really 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 positive 
And uh, I'm really happy because, you know, I have my office, I have this. I'm sitting here in my fucking man cave. Hello over there. I mean, look at this. Look at this space, man. I can shove all my shit inside that door right there and just have everything cleaned up like this. It's amazing. And it's uh, really an environment for me to be inspired in. And uh, I'm really, really happy right now. And also, the other cool thing, like I talked about before, you know, I had the disconnect with uh, when I get home. At home right now, I don't even have, like, a guitar. Uh, I don't have a desk where I can work. So I just go home and, you know, I do not work at all. So because of that disconnect, whenever I get to the office, I'm really psyched and pumped to work and I work really hard and effective. That's at least what I kind of discovered now from uh, getting my routine going here at the office. So uh, I'm very, very positive. Thank you so much. Uh, what's more challenging for you, playing clean or playing distorted? I think a lot of people are probably going to say that clean is harder than distorted, but I think uh, distorted is probably a little bit harder because the problem with distortion is that every mistake is going to be heard or every small little miss note or, you know, a little slide like it's going to be heard uh, it's a lot easier with cleans actually I don't think a lot of people mention this but I think one of the most important things to learn when you're trying to learn metal rhythm guitar is proper hand muting which means it's not only your like left hand muting the strings while you're not playing like you lift you know the fingers after you play the chord to dampen them you also have to work your right hand I'm not talking about palm muting I'm just talking about muting in general to make the guitar not make weird sounds when you're playing So I still think that playing distorted sounds is probably harder than playing clean. That's at least me and my point of view. Positive Ola. Manlopsan2. Hey Ola, could you show us your old room? How does it look like now? Any projects to do in there or just a room for stuff? All right, let's go over to my old room. All right, so... This is the room. You see the green screen wall? This is the wall where I had my Willa Chug, you know, my Willa Chug wall and the coffee with Ola wall. This is where I have my desk, right here. And I mean, watching it like this, it's really small. These are the boards from the wall. And uh, yeah, this looks great, huh? This is like a really old wallpaper right there from probably like the 70s or something like that. So what we're gonna do here is basically fix this uh, fix the walls, make it white. I think we'll move our son in here. He's gonna sleep in this room because it's bigger than his uh, room right now. So yeah, that's what's happening right here, guys. Elia Shiver, for the next FAQ, do you prefer a 4x12 or 2x12 for a live situation? I'm still on the fence about, and honestly, like... Like both. <laughs> okay, I like 2x12s because it saves my back when playing live. But sound-wise and feel-wise, nothing beats a 4x12. And even better, a full stack, two 4x12s. That's the best for me. When you just have one 4x12 on the floor, you know, the speakers will hit your legs. Doesn't really do that much, but, but when you have a full stack, you know, the top speakers will be closer to your ears and, you know, it will give you a little bit more of a push and a feel. I just prefer 4x12s. They deliver more bass, they can be louder. But if I would carry my own equipment, it would probably be too... 2x12 cabinets or something like that. So there you go. Thank you. Fresho. Hola. Why do you have tattoos on one arm but not on the other? This is a great question. And I have a simple, simple, simple answer for this. It's because I'm a little bit of a cheapskate, to be honest. It costs a lot of money to uh, make tattoos. And uh, it was a long time since I made one now. But uh, I'm actually thinking of doing this arm right now. And uh, we're gonna see. It has to be the right thing to do. But you know, just filling one arm is a lot more economical than filling both arms. Just saying, it's like half the cost, basically. So that's my reason right there. Nuclear Vampire. Hey Ola, can you show us how you sync your audio and video during editing when using multiple cameras and microphones? Love the channel. Thanks. Okay, schooling with Ola. Let's do this. This is gonna be great. So I'm making this little screeny McScreen face right here. Uh, as you can see here, this is Logic currently recording 
my FAQ that I'm doing and I have uh, one track of talking this is me talking right here and then I have one uh, track of playing this is the DI signal you can see here so what I do when I film is that I record in to my camera that has a camera microphone audio on it that goes into the video clip and then I have this logic session where I bounce out a uh, full mix of my talking and my playing or if I have like a Will Chug or a Rig of the Week I have you know a cabinet microphone and uh, one and two here for instance and I mix all of this inside Logic and then I bounce that out to Final Cut Pro so I'm gonna open up Final Cut Pro here oh here I have a project with uh, coffee with John Brown my, my uh, little good friend from uh, Monuments and when I usually film all of these videos is that I film with separate cameras I have one there I have one here and one here so three cameras for FAQs but for coffee with Ola for instance I have two so uh, what I do then is that I have two different angles and I make a multi-clip is what you call it so uh, basically what Final Cut Pro X is doing is that they sync the two clips then I have something called a multi-cam clip and it looks like this can you see here and um, it's just one instance like this and then here down here I have that audio that I bounced from Logic the cool thing about about this multi-cam setup is that now that I have different angles of a camera I can basically just With by okay, clicking okay, one oh, or two okay, cool. I can yeah, switch those, those camera cool, actually. Sometimes they like have this these, uh, these inside logic mounts, while I'm actually like looking through the material you know, every week so I can go so back and forth and switch well. camera angles and uh, basically that's it so at all times I'm not really changing any microphones or anything like that that is just the balanced out mix from logic down here easy as that the Timmy Toad hey Ola great video covered a lot of different topics my question is about gear I see you use a Mac mini what made you choose that over a pro and why do you have two screens okay thank you so much I chose a Mac mini because there wasn't a pro I had the old Mac pro and uh, it was just not holding up well and uh, when Apple announced the new Mac minis you know I, I I got that instead and the reason why I'm not using uh, Mac pro or the newer Mac Pro is basically uh, the price have you seen the price it's uh, it's very 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 expensive I mean if you compare the base models of the Mac mini and the Mac Pro there's a little bit of a difference there and if I start to spec out a Mac Pro it ends up at around like sixteen thousand dollars or something like that it's stupid it's insanely expensive so I'm using my Mac mini now and I also bought a eGPU that I have to edit my videos and that's working really well at the moment I must say and why do I have two screens well you know I had my ultra wide screen before and I really liked that setup it was really nice you know working with an ultra wide screen is amazing but now I have it out there in my second office and I have two screens here and you know just having two screens is real nice because you know I can have my full video window here and I have all the editing on this one for instance so it's really nice to you know be able to split everything up rather than having you know a split screen or something like that it's a lot more workspace to work with if that makes any type of sense right there Alif 499 Hi Ola in a recent FAQ you said an RG550 would be your deserted island guitar do you own one can you review it I do not own one but in the same video I also said that uh, John Petrucci Ibanez would be one so I'm gonna go and grab that like this is what is so awesome about this office is that you know if I want to bring out a guitar I just do it it's right over there before when I had my you know in my apartment I had to go to a storage unit I couldn't really go and like just like casually collect something but now it's just like it's just like free for all man love it <laughs> I mean these guitars are just really like a really awesome working horse I would say I mean they're just so good and I mean they're just really good awesome playing guitar and I think it sounds pretty good as well I love this guitar I had a P2 back in the day but I sold it this is the P4 but yeah I played a bunch of old 550s and uh, they're amazing and you could still get them for really good prices out there if you buy one used Dylan Schlabau 
Ola, Between the Bird and Me is my all time favorite band. And they covered Cemetery Gates by Pantera. Definitely a must check out cover. I would also say their song Goodbye to the Gallows is a fair representation of their overall sound. Kick. Kind of. Oh, I missed something there. Kind of. Okay, let's check it out. Ola checks out again. There's a huge lack of reverb on these guitars. <laughs> If you compare it to the original, that is. Well, it sounds good. It's not as raspy as Pantera. It's a little bit more polished and a little bit more dry. Well, they put a little bit of their own spin on it. That's okay. Alright, I'm not sure when they made this. It sounds a little demo-ish, but I think it's really cool that they made a Pantera cover. It's a little bit more chill. <laughs> well, that was cool. Well, I like the spin on it, though. That's cool that they made that. Uh, I will probably have to... Uh, I don't know what I probably have to do. Let's just say I prefer the original, but then again, you know, uh, the original is always better. I mean, look at me, trying to make Pantera covers and, you know, it's just shit, basically. Kerry West. Hola, what lenses do you use when filming? Have you thought about lowering the f-stop to get a sexy blurry background? Okay, that's a great question, but the problem is when filming with Micro Four Thirds uh, cameras, which is not full frame, you lose a little bit of that depth that's going on. But, you know, the reason why I'm all the way over here is because I'm filming in 4K. You know, if I go back up here, you know, you will see all my shit basically in my face, which is not good. But as you can see now that I'm close, you know, you see that the background is really getting blurry and kind of nice. But if I'm over here talking like this, it's more like a gangster video more than anything. That's not what I want. And I don't want you to see my pimples and, you know, all my bullshit in my face in 4K. So I'm all the way back over here. So there we go, that was the last question. Have we covered everything? Uh, I have new merch, click up there. I have new guitar, click somewhere else, new guitar, check. Do I have something else that's new? Uh, oh, these are new. These little uh, absorbers back here. I had a problem with standing weights here and uh, the standing weights are gone. Listen, could you hear any standing waves? No. It's because of these motherfuckers. Okay, so I hope you liked this video. If you have any questions, please post them in the comment section of this video and I'll see you next week, okay? Thank you so much for watching, guys. Bye.